Hello, and welcome to Viewpoints. I'm Eric Dahl of the Naval Postgraduate School. My guest today is Antonio Skurlock of the Department of Homeland Security. And today we're going to be talking about cybersecurity and DHS's role in cybersecurity. Antonio, welcome. Good morning, Eric. It's a pleasure to be here. Great to have you here. Now, you are a senior cybersecurity strategist at DHS. That's a little hard to say, a lot of S's there. <laughs> Can you tell us what does a senior cybersecurity strategist do? Well, um, the beautiful thing about it is I don't do anything alone. Um, there's a team of us um, who are uh, putting forth our, our skill sets and our intellect. And primarily what we do is look at what I would call big P policy, uh, those things that come out like executive orders uh, and other legislation. Um, and then little P policy, internal department and agency uh, initiatives, instructions, directives, and, and have an understanding of what they mean to us uh, and to our organization with regard to maybe tactical implementation, operational implementation, strategic activities. Um, do we need to expand upon, enhance, uh, articulate, or better come up with a, a version of our own to um, better uh, communicate that to the organization? So that, that's what we do primarily. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting. I hadn't heard that way of describing it, big P and little p policies. <laughs> we'll talk about some of those policies in just a minute. But first, let me ask a little bit more about your background. You've got an interesting, you've had a very varied background, including as a United States Naval officer, which makes it very appropriate for you here to be visiting the Naval Postgraduate School and the Center for Homeland Defense and Security. Can you tell us about your background and how that led you to this position? Well, you know, uh, Eric, uh, I appreciate you uh, recognizing and doing some good homework on me. I enlisted in the Navy. Uh, 20 years ago, uh, plus a few uh, than that. Um, did a short period of time as an enlisted sailor uh, working in aviation maintenance and was, was always curious to have my own personal interest in, in computing, uh, primarily from a gaming standpoint. I am a, uh, somewhat of a fanboy and a gamer. Uh, that being said, um, after I commissioned, they uh, stood up a community of uh, cybersecurity professionals called the Information Professional Community to address uh, what the Navy saw as a, a long-term investment in uh, cyber uh, from a warfighting domain back then. When I had my last tour at United States Cyber Command, I, I was looking for more opportunities, and DHS seemed like the right place to go. Uh, considerable investment by uh, our country uh, in that organization on, on multiple levels and means, and as you've seen over the last few years, a considerable investment in DHS uh, as a hub for cybersecurity, not just information sharing, but uh, defense and so on. So it's, it's been, um, it seemed like the right move, the right step. Well, that's great. Well, let's talk a little bit about DHS. You know, Everybody's concerned about cybersecurity nowadays. Uh, what is DHS doing in the area of cybersecurity? You know, it would probably be easier for me to say what we're not doing. And I don't mean that to be facetious in any way. You know, as, as we as a nation uh, embrace and learn more about cyber and try to have an understanding of our uh, authorities, uh, our policies to operate in that domain, who should be doing what, I think one thing that DHS is doing, I think, very well is uh, leading the charge on articulating what it means to us as individual citizens, um, as critical infrastructure entities, um, as businesses in this domain, how we can work well together holistically to um, strengthen ourselves, um, be, more, be more resilient in uh, the cyber domain. So a lot of this is partnering, information sharing. It's not just about sending a team out to take a hmm. look at you. Hmm. Okay. Well, we can talk about resiliency a little bit and maybe uh, in a minute ask your advice on, on what we all as individuals can do about that. Uh, but there are a number of different parts of DHS, uh, including everything from what I understand is called the Office of Cybersecurity and Communication. There are other separate organizations such as the Secret Service. Uh, are you involved in helping all those different parts of DHS work together? You know, it's interesting. Um, I will use a, a military term. It is an all-hands effort. Um, there isn't anyone in DHS who isn't working across those organizations, those internal communications, uh, those operational lines with regard to cyber. Um, you're right, uh, CSNC, the uh, Cybersecurity and Communications, uh, may be at the forefront. It may be the one that's most widely known because it has the operations centers. Mm -hmm. um, but the truth of the matter is we're all uh, whether it be Secret Service, whether it be infrastructure protection, um, working towards having a better understanding and um, increasing our 
cross participation mm -hmm. in organization with regard to cyber. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you mentioned centers, and one of the centers that has gotten a lot of attention in the last year or two uh, in the cyber world is the National Cybersecurity and Communications Integration Center. I think you pronounce that NCIC, is that yes, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I that believe you used to work there. Can you tell us what that center does? <laughs> what don't you know about me? <laughs> I've read um, your bio. You're absolutely correct. Um, uh, my first opportunity at DHS. Uh, and I do say it was an opportunity because uh, it, it was exciting uh, to be at the National Cybersecurity and Communications Integration Center. Uh, I was, uh, at the time, the director of Watch and Warning, and uh, my role was to take a lot of uh, desperate pieces of information from different organizations, different events and activities, and try to succinctly pull those together to better articulate and communicate to our partners, both on the NCIC watch floor and also external entities uh, and other operations centers, uh, those operated by either the FBI, Department of Defense, you name it. And of course, um, our private sector critical infrastructure organizations uh, like the uh, Information Sharing and Analysis Centers. Uh, the idea was to pull that information together, fuse it for leadership's internal consumption, uh, decision making, but also for those organizations' consumption and decision making. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, certainly I bet one of those other organizations that you coordinate with, that NCIC does and DHS does, is the Department of Defense. Yes, sir. Can you talk a little bit about how the Department of Defense and there's the new U.S. Cyber Command stood up within the last couple of years? Uh, how does DHS work with Cyber Command and what are the sort of the lanes in the road, the diff different responsibilities of these different organizations? Roger that. So you start off with the easy questions. I appreciate that, Eric. You know, honestly, th that is one of our primary foci, the lanes mm -hmm. on the road. Mm -hmm. uh, as you well know, uh, in the United States, uh, you know, our authorities and our policies uh, are geared towards protecting privacy, civil rights, civil liberties, a uh, foci of uh, the Department of Homeland Security, and absolutely uh, the concern of all the federal departments and agencies conducting cyber and sharing information. That said, um, the uh, NCIC and the United States Cyber Command Joint Operations Center um, work hand in hand to help defend the nation uh, mm -hmm. in the roles of the Department of Defense, and of course to secure the homeland uh, for DHS. Uh, a lot of that is um, inter-exchange of liaison officers, uh, the sharing of information where appropriate uh, and, and where applicable hmm. uh, to help be more resilient and, and to try and uh, get ahead of as much as we can get ahead of. Uh, and of course, um, function in a very dynamic environment. Uh, we're talking about things that happen at machine speed. You know, we talk about the time and the speed of the internet. That's what we're trying to do uh, with uh, an ever-increasing efficiency. Uh, and of course, as I will say, and I will reiterate, always considering privacy, civil rights, and civil liberties. Antonio, let me ask you a little bit about personal privacy and civil liberties, because many people are concerned about what our government organizations, including DHS, are doing with the personal information and the cyber information they gather. Can you tell us a little bit about how DHS works to protect the privacy and civil liberties of its citizens? You know, I'll, I'll probably do this in uh, too short of an answer for you and maybe the audience, but the goal is this. We don't want the personally identifiable mm -hmm. information. Okay. Uh, what we want and what we need is those um, indicators of activities that would help us to have an understanding of whether something's malicious, a mistake, an accident, so we can be resilient and so we can get out the right information to the right folks for mitigation. Uh, this is not about... Uh, trying to glean each and every bit and bite of data about each and everything. Uh, in all honesty, in some cases, too much information is not a good thing. Uh, the right information um, in the right formats um, at, I would prefer, machine speed, of course, with all of the associated protections for anonymization and not having that kind of information in there in place. The, the truth of the matter is that is our primary focus. We are constantly, day in and day out, working towards not having to deal with that information, mm. not wanting to even accidentally handle that information. Mm. Okay. So um, we can sort of put forth a considerable amount of effort, uh, and I don't think just us. I think all the other federal departments and agencies work very hard to not mm -hmm. have that information. All right. Well, you mentioned the term anonymize, anonymization. Can you tell us what that's about? So in a lot of ways, uh, Often, the indication of activity isn't necessarily uh, relevant to have who gave us that particular piece of information. Um, we would like to have some confidence associated with that information, but the truth of the matter is, most uh, malicious activity, nefarious activity, uh, pick it. Uh, if it's about doing harm, it's probably not being seen in just one location. Hmm. Uh, you know, everything and everyone has uh, habits. So um, the idea is 
we want to have the information that we need. We don't necessarily want to give away anything. Um, I guess uh, good words used to be like sources, methods, mm -hmm. things like mm -hmm. that. Uh, the goal, though, is to just get the indications, uh, have the incident information, not about trying to figure out exactly who okay. gave us that information. Okay. You might not, for instance, need to know or need to keep track of the fact that it's my information you're right. working just what kind of a, an attack or probe or incident it is. Is that right? Absolutely. Okay. All right. Well, let me ask you about one of the particular programs that I believe you're involved with at DHS. I think that's called the Enhanced Shared Situational Awareness Program. What's that about? So Enhanced Shared Situational Awareness um, started out uh, as one of the comprehensive national cybersecurity initiatives, of which there were 12. Um, it was the number five initiative. And its goal was to enhance situational awareness between the federal cyber centers um, so that they could better enable an integrated operational uh, activities, meaning <clears throat> whatever capabilities or capacities that we could bring to bear as a whole of government to deal with uh, significant cyber events. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So uh, the program is about machine speed uh, exchanges of information to enhance that situational awareness. And, and what I mean by that is not trying to eliminate human beings, but um, where machines do something better than we do, where hmm. we can automate a process, we want to do that. We want to give back, if you will, human cycles hmm. for those critical elements that are required in cyber, which are decision related. Okay. Uh, so that's what ESSA focuses okay. on. You say it involves sharing of information. Sharing between who? DHS and private industry or the internet providers or who are we talking about? So the primary focus of ESSA has been on the federal cyber centers, United States Cyber Command's Joint Operations Center, the NCIC, the Defense Cyber Crime Center, organizations like that hmm. that have a, a federally mandated mission uh, in specific roles uh, of information sharing so that their subject matter expertise um, in uh, one domain, and I don't mean like .com or .mil, mm -hmm. I mean the domain of, say, defense industrial base, critical mm -hmm. infrastructure, where those expertises lie, can help another organization, like the NCIC, for instance, if it was working with Cyber Command, on, well, what's going on in the defense arena that may have an impact or provide okay. an awareness, if you will, for what's going on in the federal executive mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. So it's about sharing that type of information, that type of awareness. Okay, and certainly I think you'd agree that when we're sharing information, especially between government agencies and non-government agencies, those civil liberties and privacy protections that we were talking about are particularly important, right? It never goes away. Uh, it doesn't matter if we're doing intergovernmental sharing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if we're doing sharing with the private sector, uh, whether those be entities who have special relationships with us, mm -hmm. classification, things like that. Those protections are paramount and mm -hmm. at the forefront. Mm -hmm. Well, it's good to hear, and I'm sure our viewers are glad to hear that. Let me ask about the types of organizations, governmental organizations and agencies below the federal level. We usually hear about cyber in terms of the big three-letter agencies of our federal government, but what can a state, a local government, or, or a locality do in the cyber world, and are there any ways that DHS is reaching out to any of those organizations? So, you know, um, that's a multi-tiered answer, um, and I'll, I'll try and keep it very simple. Yes, DHS is reaching out through uh, multiple activities to those organizations. Um, so, for instance, you have the uh, state and urban uh, fusion centers, which um, were stood up, uh, you know, of course, uh, after 9-11 to deal is with those kinds of things. intelligence fusion centers around the country? Absolutely. Right. So those organizations um, are, are great sources to engage with and exchange information at the state local. But you also have information and uh, information sharing and analysis centers, ISACs, that are primarily focused and stood up uh, around various sectors as they're identified in our Presidential Policy Directive 21. Uh, that being said, you also have Executive Order uh, 13691, which is focused on increasing private sector information sharing. And um, that executive order um, laid the groundwork for what's going to be called uh, in the information sharing analysis organizations, which are not uh, solely configured around sector-based activities, but uh, trusted communities of interest, whatever those trusted communities of interest will be, and okay. help them facilitate information sharing with the private sector, the federal government, and even local activities. Okay, interesting. Well, one of the last things I want to ask you about is I've heard that one position that may be about to be established is those of cybersecurity advisors. Yes, sir. What are those uh, about? So, you know, um, FEMA has um, regional uh, advisors who, who deal with that type of activity. 
um, we at uh, Cybersecurity and Communications felt like, you know, um, having that subject matter expertise uh, available for um, federal departments and agencies and even the regional uh, areas as well as the states involved in those regions um, made sound sense. Mm -hmm. So uh, slowly but surely, um, we have uh, crafted uh, subject matter expertise and built billets around that mm -hmm. and are filling them. As a matter of fact, uh, Mr. Darren McElroy uh, is the cybersecurity advisor in this region. Oh, really? Here in Northern California? Absolutely. Oh, that's great. Good to hear about that. New positions sound like they're very useful. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, let me ask you one final question. Just what kind of advice would you give uh, to our viewers, to, to people around the country uh, who might be interested in trying to enhance their own cybersecurity? Uh, what, what do you, what do, do, does DHS tell the American people and our viewers? What should we be doing sort of on a day-to-day -day basis to keep secure? You know, here's the deal. Have an understanding and an awareness of um, the technologies you have and their interconnectivity. Um, pause for a brief moment and understand mm. how those things are connected and interconnected. And then think about your utility for associated with those particular pieces. Mm. And once you take that opportunity to, to stop and, and to think about what it means to have these types of devices and what they're connected to, then make that decision hmm. to actually connect them. Okay. Um, as you well know, it's a Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Oh, that's right, uh, that's And right. we're working through our, wait a minute, Stop thinking Connect campaign. Uh, but this is not just for this month. This is an mm -hmm. ongoing thought process. As we enter the realm of the internet of things, interconnectivity hmm. is a way of life. Hmm. And once we embrace that, um, we're almost um, obligated, I would say, absolutely obligated to think about how we use these things and what they're connected to and what information is being passed across them. So we would encourage folks to take that opportunity to learn, mm -hmm. uh, engage, and if, and if your child is the smart person, mm -hmm. have a conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, if friends are the smart people, have a conversation about what it means to be Good in this point. interconnected world we live in. That's a great point and great reminder that this is Cybersecurity Awareness Month, so we all need to sort of think before we click and think before <laughs> we, we connect is what you're saying. Yes, sir. Well, that's great. Well, Antonio Skurlock, thank you very much for being with us today to talk about cybersecurity and about DHS and for visiting us here at the Center for Homeland Defense and Security. It's an thank absolute you. pleasure. Thank you, sir. Thank you.